Adding fractions. Here we have 8 thirds being added to 1 in 56 70 seconds. All right, so the first thing we need to do is reduce. So let's go and get that done. So what goes into 8 that also goes into 3? All right, well, when we're reducing, we're looking for a factor of, a common factor of the top number, the numerator, and the bottom number, the denominator. So, and we're always looking for the biggest number that goes into the top and the bottom. So we call it the greatest common factor. And uh, so what's the biggest thing that goes into 8 and 3? Well, really, there's only one. Only the number 1 goes into 8 and 3, so that's not going to reduce at all. Um, also, but notice, this is an improper fraction. Okay, the numerator is bigger than the, the denominator. So this makes this fraction larger than 1. And fractions are supposed to be small pieces of things. Things smaller than 1, right? That's what fraction means. And this is a fraction larger than 1. So that's why we call it an improper fraction. Not that we can't work with them, it's just we like our fractions to be smaller than 1, especially when adding or subtracting. It makes it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the magic of division to figure out what this fraction is as a proper fraction, as a mixed number. So I write my division, 3 into 8, okay? And so I've, my denominator, I've colored green, and 3 goes into 8 twice, and notice I've colored that kind of purplish, okay? So that's the quotient. The result of division is called the quotient. So 2, and then 2 times 3 is 6, and 8 take away 6 is 2. The remainder is 2, okay? The remainder becomes our new numerator, the new top number. Okay, so we get 2, and how many thirds? We get 2 thirds, 2 and 2 thirds. So the remainder is our numerator. Our old denominator is our new denominator. The denominator, the bottom number, does not change. The whole number is the quotient. Okay, so we get 2 and 2 thirds. Now, the 56 over 72, what's the biggest number that goes into 56 and 72? Now, you don't always have to go for the biggest. You can, you know, you can go for the most common or the easiest or whatever you can think of, and you might have to do it a few times. Now, in this case, I can think of the GCF right away because 56 screams to me 7 times 8, and 72 is 9 times 8. So both these numbers are divisible by 8, so I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 8. So divide by 8, divide by 8, and 56 divided by 8, as I said, was 7, and 72 divided by 8 is 9. So we're going to get 7 over 9, so plus 1 and 7 over 9. There we go. Now we need a common denominator. All right. So now we're looking for the the smallest number that three and nine both fit into. Okay. So we're looking for multiples of three and multiples of nine that that these two numbers have in common. So we're looking and we're looking for the smallest ones. So we're looking for the lowest common multiple of three and nine. So the lowest common denominator is the LCM. All right. Um, well, 3 and 9 both go into 9, so we're going to write these both as fractions over 9. So this 2 and 2 thirds, I'm going to write as 2 and something over 9. Now I have to ask myself, what did I do to the 3 to make it into a 9? Well, I multiplied it by 3. So whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, okay? Because when multiplying by the top and bottom by the same number, it's like multiplying by 1. We don't change its value, okay? So we end up getting 2 times 3 is 6. So 2 and 6 ninths plus 1 and 7 ninths. Then I'm going to add um, the 6 and the 7. It's going to be going to give me 13 ninths. And then I'm going to add the whole numbers, 1 and 2. So that gives me 3 and 13 ninths. But well, once again, I have an improper fraction. So we're going to use division again. So 9 goes into 13 once. 1 times 9 is 9. Subtract, and we get a remainder of 4. Okay, once again, this is our quotient, right? So we get 1. This is our denominator, 9, and our remainder is our new numerator, 1 and 4 ninths. So I'm going to add the 1 to the 3, and then we have 4 and 4 ninths. And that's it. And that's how you add fractions. Have a good day. Oh, beta, by the way. Let's just review our steps. Okay, so the first thing we did is we reduced. Okay, the second thing, we looked for a common denominator. The third thing is we wrote them as equivalent fractions over a common denominator, like two-thirds is equivalent to six-ninths, okay? Then we added, and then we reduced, okay? So those are all the steps. So step one, reduce. Step two, common denominator. Step three, equivalent fractions. Step four, add. Step five, reduce. And that's it. That's how you add fractions. Let's just go and check out and see if this is the right answer. So four and four-ninths. So four. And four ninths. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yay! And that's it. Have a good day.